ファンタジーの世界にいるみたいハッピーこれ絶対再生数稼げるわよ使えても短くしたいし Everything you need to know about Eden's Zero Welcome to Anime Town. Today's topic is everything you need to know about Eden's Zero. Make sure you've pressed that like and subscribe button. Well then, shall we begin? If you have never been in the anime community, then you must have heard about the anime called Fairy Tale. It's among the most popular series in the world of anime, and for one reason or another, there may have been a couple who have enjoyed or at least watched Fairy Tale. Its target audience is mainly compromised of younger teenagers. Friendship is mostly the main theme, and fan service is a fundamental component of its charm. In the end, Fairy Tale managed to make itself known through its simplicity and juvenile nature, but as I said, it's all part of its charm. It's the reason why so many people have enjoyed this series and still continue to do so. The author had another work before Fairy Tale called Rave Master, but it was never able to reach the same level of success. <laughs> But now, after two successful serializations, the mangaka Hiro Mashima has another successful serialization that has been ongoing ever since 2018. It's a series called Eden Zero, and in more ways than one, it is very similar to Fairy Tale. In fact, it may have the potential to surpass it due to the emphasis it is put on world building. Unlike Fairy Tale, where it has more about the slice of life fantasy and action, so in many ways, Eden Zero has similarities not just to Fairy Tale, but also to the universally praised king of world building, the manga called One Piece. Plus, now that it has finally received an anime adaptation which is currently ongoing, it is the perfect time to talk about it and who its target audience is. As for the premise, the story takes place in space, which is in essence filled with almost unreal numbers of mysteries and destinations. And since this is a work of fiction, the grand adventure that'll take place in space will have many fantastical aspects that intricately create this sense of adventure and exploration filled excitement as the main character continues to transverse through space as well as meeting new people and becoming friends with them. The story of the main character is a childish pursuit for friendship, and the way the first scene in the anime is executed is quite fascinating. From the moment that it begins, we are shown a comet blitzing through the endless sky. Young Shiki is sightseeing it together with his grandpa and a friend. He is taken aback as he thinks of it as a moving, um... Well, he is then fooled into thinking that the common is a dragon, but the natural sense of curiosity of a young child is wholesomely portrayed. However, the question is, will they ever know if it was a common or a dragon unless they see it up close? It is quite far away after all, and you never know until you go up. So Shiki says that he can't go somewhere that high. His words are properly responded by his grandpa as he tells Shiki that if he continues to remain here, there are things that he will never know and there is a significant number of them. So he gives Shiki some humble advice. Leave this place one day, go to loads of kingdoms, meet lots of people, and then make a lot of friends. Shiki wonders about the term friends for a little, but his grandpa then explains what friends are. He tells them that friends are the most important thing in the world who support you through thick and thin. Just know that if you have a friend who will shed a tear for you, you'd better treasure them forever. Hence, one of the main themes of this series is set straight right from the start. This brings us to another question which is also hinted upon the same scene. Shiki asks his grandpa about what's beyond the sky. He then tells him that there is a space beyond the sky, and there's everything there. Creatures like dragons, fishes, dogs, cats, and even humans, not to mention bugs. And then an important reveal. Shiki is told about the existence of a certain someone in this vast endless space. Their name is Mother, and that person is someone who can grant anyone's any wish. And as for Shiki, whose dream now is to make tons of friends, this story and vague explanation of what lies beyond the vast reaches of the sky were just enough to inflict a spark of genuine curiosity and sense of adventure within the boy. 
Now what's interesting about this scene was how both his friend and grandpa were robots while he alone was human. Not to mention the existence of dogs, cats, humans were hinted in the first scene. I found it odd, but as you continue watching the episode, you'll see why it makes sense. Years have passed, and now the actual story begins. He is about to leave his planet, explore different kingdoms, and make new friends along the way. Still, the main theme is friendship and the exploration is secondary to that. For now, Eden Zero is proving to be quite enjoyable. Sure, there are some people who can call it Fairy Tale 2.0 because of the theme and the character designs, but that's not really the case. Sure, you can think of it that way, but it's not like Boruto where the story moves into the second phase. It's a different story with different yet similar looking characters, and most importantly, it has a different kind of world building that may prove to be more detailed than Fairy Tale ever was. For what it's worth, Eden Zero has more natural interactions between characters, which just shows that the author now has more experience with creating likable character dynamics. If we consider what Fairy Tale was at some point in its life cycle as Eden Zero, then Eden Zero is looking more promising. The world building is something that evolves and expands as the series goes on, so we'll have to wait a little bit more before making assumptions. Plus, Eden Zero has a narrator who occasionally pops up and explains things. Not to mention, platforms like YouTube are a real thing in this story. There's a crossover between Eden Zero and Fairy Tale, which I recommend checking out. But for now, should you watch Eden Zero? Well, if you watched and enjoyed Fairy Tale, then you definitely should. Otherwise, I don't think it's an anime that can genuinely be enjoyed by everybody. But if you consider yourself young and full of energy, then it's indeed worth giving a shot. Now, let's talk about the character designs. They are the same as Fairy Tale, and the cat named Happy exists in both series, so for what it's worth, it's a deliberate creative decision on the author's part. He is using the same character designs and the same theme, but with a different story and world building because that's how he intends it to be. It is a series that can be enjoyed by a younger audience, and that's what it intends to do. So if you go in expecting a different kind of series, you'll thoroughly be disappointed. So there you go guys, this was an analysis on Eden Zero. Press that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and leave a comment saying I subscribed and I'll personally reply to your comment. So what are your thoughts about this series? Have you seen it? Are you planning on seeing it? What do you think about it? I am looking forward to hearing thoughts so go wild in the comment section. Well then, I'll see you guys on my next video.